I got a got a big butt. It's gigantic. If I'm gonna be blunt about it, and you know what? The funny thing is, I got several big butts. And, and, and before you before you discard me or, or wince at the disgusting notion of that, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and suggest that possibly you have at least one big butt as well. Yeah, you like that? Hurts a little, huh? Let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something, okay? Everybody we know has a big butt. And more often than not, it's the thing that actually gets in the way of us living a consistent life for Jesus. Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna expound a little bit, okay? See if you can recognize some of these butts. But I have to work more. But my favorite TV show is on. But my kids have practice. But I gotta tweet something. But it's such a beautiful day. But I'm just not in the mood. But I deserve a break today. You see, everything kind of interferes with my life of, of just living an authentic life for God, okay? And more often than not, it always has something to do with some sort of butt, okay? Even the littlest of butt can distract me. It really can. The littlest of butt can make me think, well, I'm not going to pray today. I'm not going to think about it today. I'm not going to deny myself. I'm not going to read the Bible, blah, blah, blah. Whatever God asks me to do, I seem to have a butt for it and get away, okay? And the most horrendously big butt of all time is the butt that gets in the way of me just hanging out with God and reading His Word. It's true. Think about it. All the times you're about to open that, and all of a sudden a big giant butt gets in the way. A butt, much like one of these. But I got a farm bill, but I'm tired, but the game's over, but I read last Tuesday, but I gotta check Facebook, but I don't like Leviticus, but it's too hot in here, but I, I just don't like books, but I don't understand it, but it's boring. But what does that have to do with me in the 21st century? Those are some ugly butts, people. Let's just call them what they are, ugly. Ugly butts. Okay, and there's a lot more to them, sad but true. Here's a list, although not exhaustive, of some of the most popular butts known to mankind. But I don't have enough money yet. But others will think that I'm a nerd if I carry the Bible. But they won't like me if I talk about Jesus. But I don't know if God will do what I ask. But I just can't get motivated. But I'm afraid. But I don't have all the answers. But the small group is the same night as Monday Night Football. But can I just let my life speak for itself? But I'm not happy. But that's not my gift. But that's the pastor's job. But I don't know how to pray. But I can't believe that. But I don't know where to start. But everybody else is having fun. Butts abound, friend. But, 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 but. Here a butt, there a butt, everywhere. A butt butt, okay? And, and, and the most overused butt of all time, but I just don't have enough time. Really? Oh, come on, we have a lot of butts. God has given us a real simple word, okay? If we learn it, and we share it, and we teach it, and we live by it, then see, God gets glorified, people benefit, and then we get blessed. That's why we do what we do. That's the why behind the butt, okay? And ultimately, that's the whole point I'm trying to make here, my fellow butt lovers, is if your butt is bigger than your why, then your butt's too big. Okay, it's time to, metaphorically speaking, snap into a Slim Jim. Okay, let's slap on some spiritual shape-ups and hit the road a little bit so we can just manage the butts a little bit. That's all we're trying to do. That's what we're talking about. Let's minimize the excuses. Let's shrink the butts. Shrink the butts. Say it with me. Shrink the butts. That's what we need to do. And you and I can do that together. We can conquer this. You and I can do it if we start today, okay? I know we can. Let's just do it. No ifs, ands, or... Yeah. I think you get it. It's true. So we're going to look at some of those in the Bible, some of the butts. And some of the butts that people have. You know, we're going to look at one of the first recorded excuses in the Bible. You know, excuses go way back. We're not the ones that invented excuses. We can go right back to the very beginning. Genesis 3, and we find the first excuses. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave me, she gave me from the tree and I ate. First excuse. Terrible excuse, men. Started with a man. And what's his excuse? God confronts Adam and says, you did what you weren't supposed to do. Why did you do it? He says, well, it's the woman that you gave me. Blames it on his wife. But, you know, the woman wasn't completely spared there. She said, then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. She didn't take the blame herself either. There was a serpent. He deceived me and I ate. Well, she knew she wasn't supposed to eat. So we see right there from the very beginning, coming up with excuses. So easy to come up with excuses. Sometimes it's hard to do what's right. Now, one of the excuses you hear, one of the butts we're going to look at, is some people might hear this a lot from people, but the church is full of hypocrites. How many have heard somebody say that? Oh, yeah. The church is full of hypocrites. 
I don't want to go to church because they're just a bunch of hypocrites. <coughs> How many know what a hypocrite is? Now it says here not going to church because of hypocrites <laughs> is like not going to the gym because of out of shape people. <laughs> I mean, is the right place for a hypocrite to be is in church, isn't it? The right place for an out of shape person to be is in the gym. Luke 6, 42 through 43 so it says, Oh, how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye when you yourself, if you do not see the log that is in your own eye? So you say, how can you say to someone, let me get that little speck of sawdust out of your eye if you've got a log in your own eye? <laughs> see, people are saying, I don't want to go to church because it's full of hypocrites. They need to get the log out of their own eye. He goes on to say, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye. And then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So my answer to people is, well, I don't want to go to church because it's full of hypocrites. Is Well, maybe you need to examine yourself first. See, hypocrite in, in the Greek comes from Hippocrates. Hippocrates means an actor under an assumed character. This is an acting term. A stage actor, that's what a hypocrite is. So being a hypocrite means you're acting like something you're not. Everybody at some time or another is a hypocrite in our life. I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, we act like we're something we're not. We act like we're better than we are. We act like we're, you know, whatever. All of us at some time or another have, have that problem. So the church obviously is going to be full of hypocrites. But that's where the church, where you need to be is in church. If you're a hypocrite. That's a really bad excuse not to go to church. Because it's full of hypocrites. You know, the Bible doesn't say we're perfect, does it? There is no perfect church. If you find a perfect church, once you start going there, it's not perfect anymore. <laughs> so stop trying to look for the perfect church. We just need to get to church. We need to be in fellowship one with another. But I got up late. Or I was tired. People use that excuse a lot. But I got up late. Well, that's okay. You can come to church late. Better late than not coming at all. All right. Right. Yeah. Okay. We don't count how many came to church until the end of service. If I count, if I count when we start, our count's pretty low. But every week, how often do you not go to work because you overslept or were tired? Something to ask yourself. How long will you keep that job? You know, it's amazing we can get ourselves out of bed to go to work. A job I had, I had to get up at 5.30 every morning to get out of the house by 6 to get to work on time. Sunday, I get to sleep in. <laughs> I don't have to get up till 7.30. Sometimes a little later to get ready to get here on time for Sunday school. So that's a, that's a bad excuse. Because most of you, if you work, get up a lot earlier than you have to get up on Sunday. Sleep in on Saturday. That's the Sabbath anyway. So rest on the Sabbath. <laughs> Proverbs 6 and 9, and the, you know, the Bible talks about the people like to lounge around in bed. It says, how long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? You need to put that on your, your, your alarm. If you have an alarm, you can record a voice. Come on. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? <laughs> Or Proverbs 26, 14, as the door turns on its hinges, so does the sluggard on his bed. I know, uh-oh, because this morning I was kind of thinking, how much longer can I stay in bed? And I was, you know, rolling back and forth, trying to, I thought, boy, this proverb kept coming to me. <laughs> Here I am, turning on my bed like a door on its hinge. I need to get up. <laughs> Remember that one, Proverbs 26, 14. How many have ever done that? Just laying in bed, you're turning back and forth. You just don't want to get up. Like a, like a door on its hand. <laughs> Obviously, that's nothing new either. <laughs> it's in the Proverbs. See, if it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. <laughs> Is church important to you? 
Is fellowshipping with other believers important to you? It should be important to you. That should be the most important thing in your life. Getting together with God, with God's people. Because see, that's what keeps us strong spiritually. And in the time that we're living in right now, it should be more and more important. The only way we're going to stay strong in this world today is if we remain close to God. People that are not in church or outside of church trying to be Christians and not being in fellowship, they slowly drift away. But see, when we're together, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves one with another. There's a reason for that. What does forsake not mean? That means don't not do it. <laughs> the opposite of that would be do it. We get together for a reason because we build each other up when we're together. If you're having struggles in your life, there's somebody that you can find that you can pray with, that you can share with. You know, in the New Testament church, if we look at their pattern, they got together every day. Sometimes all night long. We're not asking for that. You know, once a week, we try to keep service short. A little over an hour. It's not much. But it's to energize us. It's to energize, to help us. And we have Wednesday night service to help you through the week. Do you find yourself in the middle of the week getting towards Wednesday and say, you know what, I just need to be recharged. Come on down with us. We have a great Bible study going. Those that are here are enjoying it. We have time for prayer, but it helps energize us. It helps get us through the rest of the week. I will go, but first I have to stop, whatever, or I will go after I start. Some people say, I won't go to church until after I stop doing such and such. Well, that doesn't make sense. Do you take a shower to get clean before you take a bath? No. If you don't want to sit in your dirty bath water. Don't want to sit in your dirty bath water. I don't know how dirty you are. If you wait until you're perfect to start worshiping God with His people, then you will never enter the doors of a church. Because you're not going to be perfect enough. We go to church to help get fixed, get cleaned up, to get built up. We don't do it before we go. So many people say, well, I can't go to church until I get this taken care of in my life. No, we like imperfect people. <laughs> because I'm not perfect. Believe me, ask my wife. No, don't, because she'll tell you the things I, I don't want you to know. <laughs> But none of us are perfect. We can't wait until we're perfect to go to church. Until we stop doing something. All of us have struggles in our lives. Things that we're struggling with. If you're struggling with something, this is the place to come. To help with your struggle. Come down and have us pray with you. You know, but you don't need to be perfect. See, God accepts you just as you are. Not how you think you need to be. Yes. Joel 2.32 says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Does it say that those that have straightened out their lives and call on the name of the Lord will be saved? No. Whoever. Right where you're at. Whatever is going on in your life. Call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Thank God for that. Boy, it, it's hard being perfect. Because I haven't been able to achieve it yet. So I thank God that He accepts me for who I am. For all my warts and my blemishes and all those things in my life that aren't good. We all have them. That's normal. This is the place to be. Come to church. Let God work on it. But I've heard it all before. I don't need to go to church. I've heard it all before. Have you? <laughs> Do you really think that you have exhausted the depths of God's Word? Maybe you need to ask God to give you a desire to hear it all again. You know, I can't exhaust the depths of God's Word. I'm learning something every time I open it up. I can read the same passage over and over and pick something new out of it. And then I go, wow, I never saw that. I can't believe that. I've read this 
40 times, and all of a sudden I see something new. We will never discover the full depth of God's Word. So this idea that you've heard it all before, no, that's just an excuse. You haven't heard it all before. Some people say that that's a big but. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. But it is. But I've heard it all before. No, you haven't heard it all before. You might hear some of my jokes and they'll repeat it. Stories, but I'll try not to do that. The older I get, the more you'll hear them repeat it. But thankfully, you're getting old along with me. Yeah, and don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Romans 11.33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. You'll never find it all out. But we keep reading it, we keep studying, we keep digging into it, we find new things, and those things help us. There are sometimes I'll hear a message that I really like, and I'll listen to it over and over. And I'll get something new out of it each time. So that's a bad excuse to say you've heard it all before. But the preacher preaches too long, or too loud, or too soft. <laughs> I don't like the way he dresses. Whatever. You know, people come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, I try not to preach too long. I'm not as bad as Paul in, in the book of Acts. He preached all night long. <laughs> I mentioned that last week. The one instance where he preached... And the young man sitting in the window fell asleep and fell out of the window and, and died. They went down, raised him from the dead, and they started all over again preaching. <laughs> they didn't stop. My sermons are, are shorter than that. I kind of like uh, Jaden's formula that he told us a couple weeks ago. He says he always preaches 21 minutes. <laughs> That's it. He said because when he was in school, he somehow timed how long his attention span was. <laughs> He said his attention span was 21 minutes. They say your attention span is roughly equivalent to your age, but at some point it, it stops. It goes the other way. So I haven't figured that out. So maybe at 21 is where you max out, and then after that it starts shortening. Or it's too loud. Well, try not to be too loud. I'm not generally a shouting, no. hollering kind of guy. My problem would probably be I'm too soft. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I always try to wear a microphone yeah. to amplify it a little. Even though it's a small room and I could probably be loud enough that everybody hears me, I actually heard once that they say that if you amplify your voice, people will retain 80% more of what you say. Oh, I, I don't know why that is. It doesn't matter the size of the room. There's something about when you amplify your voice, it just makes people retain more. When your mom is screaming at you. There you go. <laughs> and you probably remember everything she said. <laughs> That's a good reason why my mom screamed. <laughs> this could be a problem with the preacher, but it could also be a problem with you. God speaks to us through his word, but he also uses those he's given charge to teach his word. So if you have a problem with the preacher, maybe it's not really the preacher. Maybe the problem is with you. You know, I look back at how they preached, you know, 100 years ago. It was a lot different. One of the greatest sermons, I think, Jonathan Edwards, about, um, what was the name of that sermon? Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Yeah, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It caused a revival to start. Then I read about Jonathan Edwards and how he preached. He wrote it down and he read it. So he stood up in front of the people and read what he wrote, and they said he was very soft-spoken. So imagine that, somebody very soft-spoken just reading to you. I mean, I've done that. My wife tells me not to do that. <laughs> but that's how they used to do it. It caused a revival. So it really doesn't matter how the delivery is. You know, styles change. Everybody's different. It's the Word that's important. And if you pay attention to what's being shared, the Word of God, You'll get something out of it. God will speak to you. First Corinthians 121 says, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not 
come to know God. God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Preaching is God's method for delivering his word to you. And the foolishness of the message is that Christ is crucified and died and rose again. That was foolishness to the people of that day. What do you mean you're preaching to me about somebody that died? That, that's a failure. That's foolishness. But the method that he used is preaching. I know there was kind of a movement in the church not too long ago where people thought you didn't really have a great service unless you were worshiping and there was no message delivered and everybody just stayed in worship. The rest. But as I spoke last week, worship is more than just singing, isn't it? And churches were getting away from the preaching of the word. They were just having a song service. But that's nowhere in the scripture to say that people are saved through the singing of songs. It's important. It's part of the entire worship service, but so is preaching. We'll try to keep it short. Try to keep it loud. Not too soft. Hopefully you'll pay attention. Benjamin Franklin said, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. Mm -hmm. My challenge this morning, don't make excuses. Find the time. Come to church. If we're not hitting on something that you need to hear about, let me know. And I'll research it. We'll speak on it. But that's why we have Sunday school. That's why we have Wednesday night service. We want to hit on different things. And those services allow our, our Sunday school time and our Wednesday night study allows interaction so that you can ask questions and you can and get questions you have answered. So we offer those, those opportunities are there. Take advantage of them. Come and join us. <laughs> but let's not make excuses. Let's get rid of the butts, like I said in the video, and start coming. And I know in a lot of ways I'm, I'm speaking to the choir, as they say. The message really for those that are at home this morning that had excuses. That's why we put it on Facebook and YouTube. If you know somebody that needs to hear a message that they missed, it's, it's available for them. And they can look it up and they can hear that message. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Right? One of the main reasons we come together and gather in fellowship <laughs> is that we can come in relationship with Jesus, our Savior. If you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your life, you don't have a relationship with Him, don't leave today without doing that. Got anybody looking around? If anybody at all today says, you know, I need to have a better relationship with Christ, I need to invite him into my life. I've not done that. Just flip your hand up for a second so I know if I need to pray for anybody this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you for all that are here this morning. I thank you for all that we're doing through this body, Lord. Lord, our desire is to grow closer to you, have a greater relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. Help us, Lord. Help us to desire you. If we have such a desire to you, we run when the doors are open to gather together, to encourage each other. May I said Jesus in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Before we go, I want to let you know that, um, just in case you haven't heard, they are going to be burning this house next door, next Saturday. If you want to be entertained, the, the fire department is going to set several fires and put them out and practice. And uh, they did come and talk to me. The fire chief got together with me Wednesday night and asked permission to take our fence down so they don't melt it, which is probably a good idea. And he assured me that they would put it back to our liking, and if not, they'd keep putting it back until we were happy with the way it is. So I'd let you know that might be kind of a fun thing to watch. I think the streets are going to be blocked, so you probably have to walk in. I'll probably come down here just to watch to make sure the church remains standing. Yeah. I told them that was fine as long as they, you know, because they, they said if they killed any of the bushes, anything, they would replace them. 
with whatever we wanted, they would do it to our satisfaction. I said, well, as long as that's what their plan is, then that's fine. <clears throat> um, I said, just don't burn down the church because I need to have Sunday the next service the next day. <laughs> that would kind of be a bad thing, but that house is going away. So you can come and watch that. Well, um, let's greet each other as you go. Hug somebody's neck. I hear there's something about food in the back. Yeah, Lana's going to make an announcement. So we want to make an announcement. <laughs> we'll let Lana make an announcement. I get to make it? Yeah, stand up. I and thought it was both of our ideas. <laughs> <laughs> You're better. Please don't leave because we have lots of food in the back. If you heard or not heard that it's Gail and Pastor Trent's year anniversary. Yeah. It was the 12th, and so we were trying to have a surprise, but I guess it didn't end up being quite the surprise we thought. <laughs> it's more well, like everybody that's here on the day surprise. bringing their food. I'm going, why are you bringing us next to you? <laughs> she, is, she got cool, though. I, that's <laughs> true. I guess she did. Anyway, so I hope you all stay and enjoy because we have plenty of food. and. Uh, oh. So with, with that, I didn't know that, and I put to have a, a potluck next Sunday. So the question would be, do you still want to have a potluck next Sunday? You should never say no to food. People say never say no to food. Georgia will be here. For those that will be here, do you want to go ahead and have a potluck next Sunday? I'm saying, I'm saying head shaking yes because we like one thing we do really well is eat so we will have a potluck like i said i didn't put a theme the challenge for you because i'm not supposed to be eating carbs is to make as low a carb main dish as you can if you bring a dessert you can have all the carbs you want in it i'll bring my own dessert that i can eat so low carb would be meat dishes and vegetables they grow above ground salad